Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends. Guys, welcome back to r slash Entitled People, where people truly think that they're the most important person in the world and nobody matters. And in today's episode, OP's manager tries to frame him to fire him. And all I can say is OP has the last laugh, guys. I hope you enjoy the stories. Don't shake your heads too hard. And as always, you can send or link your post to this email right here. So I work in a public library, and one of our newer services we offer is Wi-Fi Point. It comes in a box, and once it's checked out, it's activated for 7 days based on a mobile carrier service. After 7 days, it shuts off, and it has to be turned in and processed to turn on again. The Wi-Fi will not work after 7 days, and you can't get a new one until you turn in the old one. Also, if you lose any part of it, you're fined, and you can't check out a new one until it's paid or the part is returned. If you have any charges over a certain amount, you can't check anything out, period. We don't have late fees, but we do have lost and damaged item fees, so those can add up quick. People can place items on hold and get added to a queue. If they don't pick the item up in 5 days, it goes to the next person in the queue. Generally, it's not a big deal, but there's been some ugly behavior over the Wi-Fi points. We have scripted responses for most issues. With that said, queue today. When another staff member transferred a call to me saying, please answer this, I can't deal with this person. And in my head I'm thinking, uh oh. So I pick up the phone and say, thank you for calling Main Street Library Reference Desk, my name is... And before I could finish, the Karen says, Ugh, I don't care about your name. Do you have my Wi-Fi box? I respond, Can I get your name and birthday, please? So she tells me, and there's two accounts with a name and birthday, so I choose the first one. It was an expired account with a large charge attached and no holds placed at all. So I check the other account, and yes, the Wi-Fi point is currently checked out and on hold for another. She's 200 and something in line. So I say to her, it's not ready yet, ma'am. You're about 200 something in the queue. She says, I placed that a week ago. What's the hold up? At this point, I'm going from the script and say, unfortunately, we only have so many Wi-Fi points available and they're in high demand. For best practice, returning the boxes at the end of their 7-day checkout period will help the queue move quicker. At that, the woman says, I ain't driving all the way over to the library just to drop off one until I can get my next one. This is a crappy system. Why don't you just get more? Me, still using my automatic response when people start yelling, say, you'll get the notification when your hold request is available for pickup. At that, the woman says, I want it now. If I go in and snatch one off the shelf, you can't stop me. I say to her, we have a long hold queue, ma'am. They're all checked out or they're on hold for someone in the queue. She then says, what about those effing ones on the shelf, the frog or whatever? I say to her, we discontinued the hop-in offerings on Wi-Fi points to make more available for the holds queue and to better serve our patrons. The woman then says, it better serve me if you just gave it to us. I need internet. I then say to her, all of our library locations have free Wi-Fi, available 24-7 in our outdoor rest areas, and computers for public use during operating hours. She then screams at me saying, you smartass, having all the answers. She actually carried on for several minutes while I muted my phone. I'm just looking at the two accounts and confirming it's the same person, who somehow got two cards. It happens. There's also a note in her record from two years ago that she confirmed all the items were damaged and she knew about it, but she was hostile to staff. So with her being so rude, I decided to merge the two accounts. Her currently checked out items and holds are now combined with her old charges. I then cheerily interrupted her and told her if there was nothing else I could help her with, then she could check her account online at any time. Or she would get a notification about when her hold would be ready, but she would have to pay the $480 fine first. Hearing me say that, she freaked out and she demanded what I meant. And I told her the list of items and charges and how she can't check out anything until the fine is paid. I had to deal with her a few more minutes, but she stopped the name calling and she was near panic as I repeatedly told her there was nothing I could do about her charges. Now I could have put in a special case request to have them waived, but I didn't feel particularly generous. I also added a second note to her account that this patron was hostile to staff, so nobody else would feel like doing it either. Be nice to your public servants. 
Guys, talk about entitlement backfiring hard on this woman. Like, I really don't get how some people really think that the way to get something is to scream, threaten, and act like complete jerks because it rarely goes their way. And be honest, guys, who actually thinks she's gonna pay that $480 fine? My father married his wife when I was 12 years old, four years after my mom died from cancer. My father's wife had a three-year-old daughter who a year into their marriage was diagnosed with a form of cancer that was tricky to treat. She underwent chemo and radiation, but the treatment did not work. They were told about this alternative treatment that was not offered in any local hospital and would require staying someplace for at least three months with her. The treatment itself was also expensive. Now, my father was never wealthy. Neither was his wife and her daughter's father, and his family was not in her life. There was only one thing that was easily sold and would make enough money to get started on the journey, and that was my mom's engagement ring. My mom left it to me in her will, and it was mine. Before my mom, it was her mother's and grandmother's ring. My great-grandparents helped someone out, and it was a gift that was then passed down because of its value. It was extra sentimental because my grandma was in a nursing home with dementia at the time, and I had no other living maternal family left. One day out of nowhere, my father decided, not asked, that it could be sold to pay for the treatment. Of course, I said no. I begged him not to. And he and his wife told me that her daughter's life was more important and that it would be selfish to keep a ring and let her die. At this, I told my father that I would never forgive him if he sold the ring and that he was stealing it from me because it was mine. Mom gave it to me. But one day, they went ahead and sold it anyway, and I stayed true to my word. I never forgave them. I moved out in March, before turning 18, and I cut them out of my life. I still hate the two of them and wanted nothing more to do with them ever again. My father did try to stay in my life, but I told him I hope he knew that he'd lost his daughter, me, and that I wish it had been him to die instead of mom. With all that, his wife's daughter's cancer has returned, and now they want money that my dad saved for me before he married her. It's not a lot of money at all, but I guess they still have lingering stuff from when she was sick before. I told him that I would not give him the money, and the fact that he asked for it showed me that he didn't give a crap about me. His wife then told me that it's not about me. It's about saving her daughter's life, and me being hung up on losing a stupid ring that went on to save the life of a child is stupid. I told her that ring meant more to me than they did, and I would not give them any money. So they needed to leave me alone and figure out another plan. My father's parents got involved, and I ended up deleting most of my social media and ignoring them. But then I saw my father's wife while I was grabbing groceries, and she told me that I'm evil and sick and twisted, and that I should be ashamed of myself for not helping her. I don't know if it's just all worn me down or what, but I feel like I need to ask, am I the a-hole in this situation? Now, this is a tough one, guys. Like, on one hand, I can understand the desperation of the parents to try to save OP's stepsister, but on the other hand, they legally had no right to take the ring that was left to OP and pawn it for money. Like, at that point, it was stealing and such a heartless thing to do, as that was the only thing left that connected OP to her mother. So with that said, a lot of people voted OP not the a-hole. And this person says, you're not the a-hole, and you're not selfish or evil. They took a precious reminder of your mother and her family. If it had been something less important, I maybe would have understood, but it wasn't. They've made it clear how little you and your feelings matter to them. I know what they're going through is hard, and I feel for her daughter. But that doesn't mean they get to betray you like that. I'm sure your dad's wife had a wedding ring and or other things they could have sold, but instead, they decided it should be your sacrifice. So yeah, reading a post like this breaks my heart, guys, and I feel hurt for both sides. And as I've said, the parents are probably desperate to do whatever they can to help their three-year-old daughter. But there's always other options. Guys, let me know what you think. Alright, so I am so pissed. I don't even care. So, here's the story. It's 2 p.m. today, and I'm starving. I'm just coming back from the fast food joint down the street, and I'm walking towards the break room with my food in hand, hoping to enjoy a quiet, peaceful lunch to re-energize myself, so I can continue dealing with the endless waves of snarky, entitled customers that my workplace is notorious for attracting. As I'm getting to the door, this blonde woman around her 50s begins to follow me, and I can feel her following me. 
She then begins to do that pss noise that is so effing annoying. The woman continues about three times or so, but I ignore her since, you know, I'm not an effing dog or anything. So after she realizes that I'm not gonna react to her summons, the conversation goes a little something like this. The Karen screams out, hey, hey, excuse me, to which I respond, oh, I'm sorry, ma'am, I'm on break right now, but let me get one of the other employees to help you out. At this point, I begin reaching for my walkie-talkie to call someone to the aisle for help, but the woman's not having any of it. She screams at me saying, what? I will not be treated like this. I'm a valued customer, and I demand to be treated as such. You will provide your service to me right now, and that's that. No questions asked. I respond, ma'am, I would be happy to help you, but my lunch break is only 30 minutes, and, and that's when she interrupts me and says, I don't give a crap. I don't care if you're starving. The customer comes first. And at this point, I don't even retaliate. I just turn around, ignored her, as I walk into the break room with my key and shut the door behind me. The woman began to angrily pound on it for a few seconds until she finally stopped, presumably because a co-worker came to the rescue. I later found out that she complained to the manager, trying to get me fired. And of course, the manager simply brown-nosed her and told her that I would be dealt with, as an employee should never refuse service to a customer, even if they're on break. This supposedly applies even if I call an employee over the walkie-talkie for help. Honestly, I'm just venting. I'm getting sick and effing tired of this company and the management. Especially the customers, though. Like, what the F is wrong with people, man? Update number one, posted the next day. So I decided to follow some advice, and I called corporate to complain that I was basically reprimanded for following policy and refusing service to a customer during my break. Of course, corporate immediately sided with me, and everything seemed like it was going to be fixed, and my name would be cleared. But no, of course not. In the world of retail, things aren't always so clear-cut. Lo and behold, there is another factor here. So the effing woman apparently called corporate herself and basically demanded that I be fired for being rude to her. Now guys, the thing is, the store has cameras, and it turns out they investigated. And since the audio's not available, the only thing seen was me walking away from the woman and slamming the break room door behind me, in her face. Now, you'd think that's bad enough, right? Wrong. Guess what? So I also asked the supervisor, who's a long-time buddy of mine, to check the punch-in sheet, as it's automatically filled in by the computer, but it's also editable by the management. And guess what? Someone effing deleted my break time that was logged into the system. So now, not only am I being accused of refusing service to a customer, but I'm also being accused of not clocking out and leaving the premises to get food. Like, what the F? Was this a computer error, or did the manager really do this on purpose to save his own ass, or to get me in trouble? One thing to note is the guy simply doesn't like me. We have a long history of run-ins with each other, and it's openly well known that he does not like me. But here's the thing, I will not lay down and die. I will fight this thing to the end, even if right now it seems I have no allies. Now, I don't know what I can do to fight this thing, but I will damn well try my hardest. Updates will follow if something new comes to light. Update number two, posted one day later. So basically, two things happened today, and I'll try to explain them in as much detail as possible. Number one, I woke up bright and early and made a call to corporate. My plan here was to simply state that I needed my issue investigated further, even if it seemed like there was no problem on their end. As expected, the person on the other end of the phone told me the same thing they told me the first time I called. But then I said the magic word, subpoena. As soon as I made the calm yet firm threat, the person immediately told me to hold for a second. He got his supervisor on the line, to whom I explained my situation once again, and he assured me that he would see into the matter. Oh, and I also asked for a way to email the president of the company, and I sent an email to him explaining my situation as well. So that was that, but I didn't stop there. See, I had another plan. I was gonna catch the manager myself red-handed. You know, just in case corporate done goofs. Number two. So I walk into work, and I immediately go into the manager's office, and I stand right in front of him, and the conversation goes like this. I say to him, hey, I have to speak with you about something really important. He says, can it wait? I need to finish looking over these documents before 12. 
I tell him, no, it can't wait. Supervisor told me that my clock in and clock out time from lunch three days ago was not on the log. I know I punched out an in, so what happened? The manager responds, huh, weird. I'll look into it for ya, alright? To which I respond, oh, there's no need. I already called corporates, and they said they look into it personally. At this point, I had the widest crap-eating grin that I've ever had in my life. It felt good, real effing good. The manager audibly gulps at this point, no doubt crapping bricks. And he says, you know, that wasn't really necessary. You could have come to me about this first. Why would you go to corporate? I tell him, oh, I know, I just didn't want to waste your time, seeing as how you're always busy and all. You have more important things to do, like look over documents. At this point, he visibly begins to get annoyed by my attitude and my sarcastic tone. But I'm just enjoying it way too much. He says to me, now listen, I'm not really liking your tone right now. To which I say, I apologize. Anyways, I just wanted to give you a heads up, just in case corporate asks you any questions. You know how they are. And at this point, some of you might be thinking why I said that last part. Because I had a small suspicion that since he's a recently made manager, he probably didn't know that the system logs all deletions and re-entries. And sure, you would be told this if you became a manager, but I was trying my luck at this point because A, I don't see who else could have deleted my log times, and B, if it was him who deleted them, he obviously didn't know about the fact that the deletions are tracked. So what was my end game here? It was simple. I was hoping that due to this threat about corporate, he would simply go back and add my times back onto the log. And guess what? He did just that. So a couple of minutes after our conversation, he comes up to me and tells me, hey, I found out what the problem was. There was a glitch in the system and apparently it didn't register your punches, but everything's fixed now. Your log time should be there now. I then say, wow, thanks, I appreciate it. He tells me no problem. But that's not all, there's more. So just a couple of hours into my shift, I see the manager leaving the store, angrily slamming the manager's office door on his way out. When I ask my supervisor buddy what happened, the conversation went like this. I say to him, dude, why is he so angry? Supervisor tells me, I don't know, he was just with corporate on the phone for a few minutes, and then he asked me why I told you that the time logs were missing. Hold up, let me find out. So my supervisor runs out the front doors to catch up with my manager, and they talk for a while outside. After which, my manager gets into his car and he angrily drives off. My supervisor comes back inside, walks up to me and says, Dude, I'm sorry to tell you this, but he's F. Corporate found evidence of data tampering in the punch-in log. Apparently, he deleted your times yesterday, and he added them back this morning to cover his ass. He's fired. I ask him, how did he not know about the system's ability to track that stuff? To which my supervisor says, I don't know, man. So there's that. He's fired, and I will probably keep my job. And for those of you saying that I should have just let it be instead of causing more problems, no. That's not how you do things when someone's trying to F with your life. Yeah, I'm with OP on that one, guys. Like, if someone tries to mess with your livelihood and get you fired, you gotta go scorched earth on them. And yeah, that manager was a freaking idiot. Like, I don't know what he was trying to pull. Like, the guy probably tried to frame OP to make things look a thousand times worse to get OP fired, but it totally backfired on him. The guy 100% should have left it at, oh sure, let me reprimand my employee and call it a day. But boy oh boy, once he decided to mess with OP's time card, the guy sealed his fate. Trust is completely lost at that point. I live in an apartment with very thin walls. I've accepted that I'll hear noises, and I'm okay with that because that's just what happens when you live in an apartment. My upstairs neighbor, though, is the loudest person I know. Like, the guy will come back to his place late at night with his music in his car blasting, and his assigned space is right in front of my bedroom. It also doesn't help that he likes to sit there for like 10 minutes with the music blasting before he actually goes inside. I often hear him vacuuming, doing laundry, and using the dishwasher in the middle of the night. But I just put earplugs in and go back to sleep. I don't have issues with that though. That's something you need to do and is normal. My main issue is he likes to keep all of his windows open with his TV at max volume. At night. It's so loud that it sounds like if I turned on my own TV and blasted it. I am also a college student in an intense program, so I'm constantly studying. Now I've tried to use earplugs, but the TV's just so loud. 
and I've asked him if he can turn it down because I'm trying to study, and he did the first few times I've asked him. However, the issue did keep persisting, and I even reminded him that on the lease, quiet times from 10pm to 8am. At this point, he was just annoyed by me, and he turned his TV on even louder. I tried filing a noise complaint, but honestly, not much came out of it. So one night, when I was studying for my finals, I heard his loud, dreadful TV. Again, I went upstairs and asked if he could turn down his TV, and the guy didn't. He told me to deal with it. I am already stressed for the final, and I was stressed because I couldn't study in this type of environment. I felt like breaking down and crying in that moment, but I really needed that A. Which is where I had the bright idea to connect my lecture I was listening to, to my speaker, and put that on full blast. I also stacked chairs on my table, where it would be high enough for the speakers to be pressing on the ceiling. It was so loud that I could feel my ceiling vibrate. 10 minutes pass by, and I hear my doorbell ring. I open the door to see my lovely upstairs neighbor, and he told me to quiet down. Which I responded right back with, I'm sorry, your TV was so loud that I couldn't hear my lecture. So the guy huffed, and he turns his TV even louder. I then went to my car, and I parked in a quiet place since everything was closed. I might have lost the battle, but I was gonna win this war. On our lease, it says that marijuana is prohibited on the property. And if they found out a tenant's in possession of weed, they will be evicted. My upstairs neighbor smokes weed every day. The smell doesn't really bother me because I'm a pothead myself. But I don't smoke on the property since I'm paranoid about getting evicted. Also, when I would go up to talk to him, I noticed that he had a huge jar of weed behind him. Anyways, the next day, I smelled him lighting up. And that's when I called the leasing office and said there's a strong odor of what smells like marijuana coming from upstairs. The idiot also smokes on his balcony for everyone to see. I was peeping through my window to see the property manager coming by. I see her see him smoking. I then heard her go upstairs and knock on his door. Now I couldn't make out what they were saying, but I was really hoping that she saw his jar of weed. Several days pass, and I see him moving his stuff out. Now I didn't really want to stoop to that low, but this entitled idiot pushed me to that point. Now I have a great upstairs neighbor that I have no problems with. So guys, the moral of the story here is just be a respectful, considerate neighbor. And definitely be a respectful neighbor if you're doing something you're not supposed to. Like what an idiot, all he had to do was turn his TV down and he would still have a place to live. But clearly, some people believe the world revolves around them and who cares about others. And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash entitled people. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's stories. If you did, hit that thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing so you don't miss these crazy stories. And if you missed the last episode on the channel, it's an r slash malicious compliance episode. Where an entitled Karen refuses to obey OP because she thinks he's a dumb worker and she ends up ruining her house. It's such a funny story, so go check it out if you haven't. And myself and Stevie Boy will see you guys in the next one. We love you.